Especially, let's be in prayer for cold sister Kingsley. I understand that uh, she's uh, really having a challenging time uh, with his loss. So let's be in prayer for uh, Kingsley uh, Connor as well. Sister Tiffany Reed is requesting prayer uh, for traveling grace uh, as she travels to D.C. Uh, and we'll be there until next week. Please pray for safe travels uh, and safety while uh, there. So let's be in prayer for Sister Tiffany Reed uh, for traveling grace and there. Others who are traveling, I understand that uh, Sister Moore is out of town along with uh, other family members, uh, siblings, daughters, and along with Sister Davenport. So let's be in prayer. Uh, for all of them uh, as well. Be in prayer uh, for the Wiggins and I believe the Young Johnson family uh, during their time of grief and bereavement, uh, the loss of Sister Wiggins' uh, daughter-in-law, her sons, uh, Isaiah's uh, wife who passed away. So let's be in prayer uh, for the Wiggins family as they go through their season of grief. Also, Sister Rose Williams uh, and Sister Janie Cobb uh, doing uh, the loss uh, of uh, their brother uh, who will be paralyzed on this Saturday uh, in Clarksdale, Mississippi. So let's be in prayer for Sister Rose Williams uh, and Sister Jane Cobbs uh, during the loss of their brother. Uh, certainly want to continue to be in prayer for Sister Barnett uh, and uh, others who are sick and infirm, and particularly those who are among uh, our mature members, uh, Brother and Sister Love, uh, Sister uh, Moon, 
many others uh, who are going through health challenges. Uh, Sister April Smith, who, were, who was uh, dealing with some health challenges on last week, uh, let us continue to lift her up in prayer uh, as well. Then let's certainly continue to be in prayer for our nation. Uh, we, we deal with all kinds of challenges uh, each and every day uh, as we live in this society. Just last week, uh, in the area where we live, in South Haiti, on my way somewhere and the streets were all blocked off and police were I didn't have any idea what was going on at the time, but supposedly it was suspicious package. Thankfully it was uh, it wasn't any it, it, it turned out not to be anything, but you just don't know. People uh, uh we live in a sick society. Uh, but 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 we serve a powerful God. And so we have to be in, in, in prayer each and every day uh, for the times in which we live. So let's pray for our nation, for the world over, as many areas are engulfed in war, Sudan, um, the area of Ukraine, and many others. Uh, so let's be in prayer that God will bring about peace uh, and that ultimately peace will uh, prevail. Go with us just now as we go to our heavenly Father. Oh Lord, our Lord, from everlasting uh, to everlasting, uh, you are God, and you have been our God throughout all generations. We thank you, Father, for being a loving uh, God, an able God, an available uh, God, and a powerful God in all of our lives. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done, and all that you are doing. All that we know that you will do uh, in all of our lives. Were it not for you on our side, we would have already been consumed. We thank you, Father, for not taking your hands off of us and for not leaving us alone. You promised that you would never leave us uh, nor forsake us. And we thank you for being faithful to your promise. We thank you, Father, for this very privilege that we have to come before your majestic throne in prayer. We thank you, Father, for having ears, ears that are not dull of hearing, and arms that are outstretched, are ready to help in times of need. And so we come on behalf of those who uh, have made their requests known. We ask your continued blessings uh, for Sister Sandra Cunningham's and the Nams family doing at that time of grief and bereavement during the loss of her grandson, Cole Connor. Please, Father, comfort Sister Sandra in a special way as she has been uh, dealing with health challenges for uh, some four months uh, now, and now having to deal with the loss of grandson. Father, please prop her up on every lady inside. Give us strength. Help her Father to continue to look to you from whence comes all of our help. And bless us as extended family to be a source of comfort and strength for her as she goes through the season. We ask also especially that you uh, Father, please be with her granddaughter Kingsley she is especially uh, having a difficult time dealing with the loss of her brother. Father, just ask that you please comfort her as only you can and give her strength and endurance and help her, Father, to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Father, we pray for Sister Tiffany Reed uh, as she requests prayer for travel and grace. As she will be traveling to D.C., Father, bless her uh, with safe passage to her destination. Keep her safe while there, and then bring her back home safe at the appointed time. And Father, I pray is that she will find all well when she returns. For many others who are traveling, Sister Moore and other family members or siblings, uh, daughters, 
and others who are traveling. Bless them, Father. Keep them safe. Uh, protect them as they prepare to return on today. Father, bless all those traveling around them that all will be safe. Uh, they will uh, return home safe and plan all well uh, when they return. Father, we pray for the Wiggins family and the Johnson family during that time of grief and bereavement. Please, Father, lift them up. Help them, Father, to look to you and uh, help them to know that you're able uh, as they go through uh, this season, and we pray the same for Sister Rose Williams uh, and Sister Janie Cobb during the loss of their brother. Father, please give them strength. Help them, Father, to continue to uh, move forward each day, looking to you, the author and finish of our faith, knowing that you're able to see them through uh, this trying time. And help them, Father, to hold on to your unchanging age. Father, for so many uh, among us who are dealing with health challenges, uh, Father, we ask uh, your blessings for uh, Sister Barnett, for many of our other mature members uh, who are dealing with health concerns, Brother and Sister Love, Sister Moon, uh, so many of our mature members uh, who are going through their season Father, please give them strength uh, to hold on and to know that you're able to see them through. We pray for Sister April Smith, uh, who is dealing with health concerns. Father, uh, bless her health to be restored to a reasonable portion. Uh, if it is your holy uh, and divine will. For those who are recovering from surgery, we ask your blessings that the recovery will continue to go well, uh, that uh, they will be restored to a full uh, measure of health that is your holy uh, and divine will. And Father, as we live in this nation uh, that is saturated in sin and evil, uh, and uh, as we live among those who seek to take the lives of others and to do harm and engage in evil, Lord, we need you. Every day and every hour, we need you. Father, we just ask that you put your hands around us, keep us safe, protect us, and then, Father, use us to your glory and to your honor, that we might be a light in a dark world uh, that draws men out of darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. Father, we just ask that you be with this Boulevard family uh, as a whole, whether we have expressed needs or not, we all need you. We ask that you bless us right where we need to be blessed. Now, God, we prepare uh, to engage in this worship hour on this morning. Assist us in removing our thoughts from afar. Help us to lay aside the distractions that might hinder us. And help us, Father, to focus on giving you the worship that you desire. That he is in spirit uh, and in truth. Be with this young preacher as he comes this morning to share your word. Uh, bless us and we might receive our portion. Be the better for uh, for having come. Father, may we be edified. May the devil be horrified. But most of all, may your mighty name be glorified. It is in the name of God's gift from glory. In Jesus' name, let us together sing.
on this morning. Let's get ready now uh, to receive this great young preacher uh, as he comes to us in his own way after a verse of a song uh, from our song leader. The next voice you will hear uh, will be that of our good friend and brother, Brother Joshua Davis, Amen. assistant minister to the Bluff Road Church of Christ in Arkansas, Mississippi. Come on. Oh, I want to see as I turn to you and sing it as I go. All in souls who care be true. Sin, death has passed upon all of us. 
Now we all have to face the consequences. And it all started with listening to bad counsel. So sometimes you say, why do our kids go astray? Bad counsel. Why did I commit fornication? Bad counsel. Now you say, uh, nobody was around but me. Well, you, you listen to yourself. Don't bad counsel. <laughs> bad counsel. I don't care how you look at it. It's bad counsel. There was nobody around. Uh, think about it. Sometimes uh, we talk about James. Where does sin come from? Every man is drawn away with this. Oh, on us. And it's us, right? So many times the worst counselor we can listen to is us. So we got, we got to be understanding. So here's, here's an example. Uh, this is a common phrase. I'm not trying to pick on this lady. I just saw the phrase. So, my career is very important. I'm pretty ambitious. Marriage is not a priority. Not the focus of my existence. Of course, you don't plan something like that, do you? It always catches you by surprise. So, many times in our generation, we think that love is just a fairy tale. It falls out the sky. <laughs> it catches you off guard. That's not what scripture teaches. Look at the subtle, subtle changes. Here, the scripture says, he who finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. You don't stumble on love. You seek for it. You don't stumble upon a relationship. You go after it. Y'all see how a simple counsel like this can mess up people? Why do you think we got so many women going after careers before love? And then, but the way they're going after careers, they're having, having sexual activities, having babies out of wedlock. And then, when I get my career, it's time to look for a husband for my babies. And no one wants to marry me. Bad counsel. It's not living. All right? So, we can't get into all the bad counsel that's out there. But we need to know what the source. Where should we look for good counsel? God's word. Everything that you hear, you should examine by God's word. Is it uh, my uncle, Uncle Aiden, used to always have a phrase: "Is it script or lip?" <laughs> if it's not in the scripture, you need to be very careful about following that counsel. I don't care if it's coming from mom and dad. Mom and dad give you some bad counsel sometimes. Because we're not the source of their counsel. Now, if mom and dad use the word of God and they teach you the word of God, that's the counsel. Because they're not trusting in my own wisdom. But if mom and dad is shooting from here, man, you better check that out. Because we're not the source of their counsel. If mom and dad are not tapped into the source of their counsel, you need to check their counsel. Some words to know, you know, I'm a teacher, so forgive me. So I, I assume that, you, I don't assume that people know these words. I, I mean, I used to get caught off guard, think people knew stuff, and, man, what you talking about? Uh, so we don't go through the word. So, counsel. When we talk about counsel, that's a verb. It's dealing with advice given. Uh, it can also be used as a noun. A lawyer who represents a person or group in a court of law. All right? We, we're going to hear the phrase, stand in the way. Uh, it's a verb phrase. It means to linger close by, to go along with, to follow after. All right? Now, you notice when we talk about the word counsel, you see uh, the pieces of the puzzle. So when you hear counsel, if it's good counsel, it's going to help you piece your life and your heart and spirituality together. If it's bad counsel, it's going to break your life in pieces. So this lesson is very important. Listening to bad counsel is going to determine the destiny of your life and very well to determine the destiny of your soul. All right? So let's look into it. Some other words to know. Scornful is an adjective that describes a character that views a person or persons that need consideration or worthless. So if I say a person scorned me, that's something that they put, they talked about me like I was nothing. 
They put me less than. All right? Uh, bless. Bless is an adjective. It means blessed is a man that speaks of the happiness, the blessedness, the contentment in the life of the man or woman who is right or straight with God. So when we talk about being blessed, that don't mean you're being rich. Because a lot of rich people are not blessed. Now, sometimes I have to bring uh, my students and I, they, 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 most, most of them say, I want to be a rapper. I want to be a famous football player. I want to be a basketball player. That's all they think about is money. And then I, so I, I have my students do research uh, before some years, and I have them research. How many rich folks have killed themselves last year? It's startling. Millionaires shoot themselves in the head every year. Why? If riches could bring peace, certainly these rich folks would be blowing their hands up. And why do I do this? I try to get the young folks to research it so they won't think I'm making it up. I want them to see it for themselves. So they will understand that going after that is not good, good counsel. All right? So we want to, our young folks and everyone, we want to know what true happiness is. We want you to experience what true peace is. Sometimes you wonder when people lose their mother and their father and their husband and their wife and they still get up here in strength and total confidence in God. And they still have peace, even though they're in the middle of a storm. How do they have it? It only comes from God. It only comes from listening to the counsel of God that they have that peace. And this is a peace that we want all of our kids to have. This is a peace that sustains you throughout a lifetime. And it sustains the generations to come after you. A call for revival. I'll read this quick. Since the dawn of time when God created the first man and woman, we have been plagued by sin. Sin has touched every home and every family. Around 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to set us free from sin. However, in each generation, we tend to run towards that which we should run away from. Indeed, God made us perfect and upright. But as the scripture says, we have sought out many evil inventions. We have conducted many exploits and made thousands of discoveries, but yet we have simply found new ways to manipulate, steal, kill, and ultimately rob ourselves and others of eternal salvation. Is it possible that we have grown in ingenuity but have gone backwards in our reason? Indeed it is. In technology and science we are advanced, but spiritually we have become primitive. That is why men today don't even know if they are male or female. We don't know if we are animals or human. We don't know if there is a God or we just simply appear from nothing. We are indeed living in a confusing time. But praise God for giving us the scriptures. And then the Spirit of God tries to help us to abandon our primitive mindset that we may grow to maturity and thus inherit that which God the Father purposed for us from the beginning, that is to live eternal life with Him through His Son. So as we jump into this lesson, I want you to understand my purpose. Now, granted, I may say some things that offend you, but that's not my purpose. Paul offended me. But that's not because he wasn't saying, I'm going to jump on my chest. I'm going I'm to I'm jump on Mother Teresa. No. The word offends. So if you're trying to teach the gospel that doesn't that offend, you can't teach the gospel. Man, the gospel offends me when I read it. How can I teach a gospel that doesn't offend you? Sometimes we're too soft in our teaching. Word of thinking, Jesus, we talk about Jesus. Jesus is offended. Why do you think they wanted him dead? Because they, they, he made everybody feel good. They wanted Jesus dead. And they killed him. Because he offended them. The gospel offends. But that is not the purpose of the gospel. It offends those who don't want to hear the truth. But I pray that the gospel falls on good ears this morning. And I pray if it offends you, that you will be so offended, you will check out the scriptures. To prove everything I, I taught wrong. That God can talk to. Alright? Points of focus in this text. Uh, we're going to be looking at the progression of sin. 
the, the light of the blessed, the unrest of the wicked. Now, you see a little uh, stairway here. All of us are stepping up somewhere. We're stepping up in the right direction, or we're stepping up in the wrong direction. And many times, kids at young ages, we're like, man, I'm trying to figure life out. I'm trying to find my way, which direction to go. Right or left? God doesn't leave us that aimless. If we're just aimlessly walking through life, I'm afraid for you. That's a scary place to be. Because you're not going to accidentally stumble upon truth. You're not going to accidentally stumble upon good choices. It has to be taught. And it has to be received. Okay? So, and G God talks about that in the old and new bread. I love this scripture uh, because uh, the scripture kind of lays out what gets us in trouble. If we know what leads to sin and rebellion, we can avoid it. And in this scripture, it lays out step by step where we go wrong. So if we know step by step where we go wrong, we can recognize the evil that's there. And we can go the other way. Okay? And that's, that's our goal. We want to be wise in this. So the first point, the progression of sin. In Psalms 1 1, it shows the initial cause. We just mentioned that a second ago. Bad counsel. So, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, let's, let's break down what counsel is. If Brother Mike is hanging around people that are doing bad things, he said, I ain't doing it, Brother Josh. I'm being a Christian around him. Brother Michael messes with fire. He messes with fire. You may not be doing it now. Keep hanging, keep hanging with me. You think you're going to prove God a liar? That's another scripture. Who remembers the scripture? Be not deceived. Keep Christ that says, be not. That means don't fool yourself. Evil communication corrupts good manners. The scripture does not say it might corrupt you. It is that it, it will. And then it says, first, don't be fooled. Don't be a fool. Don't be deceived. Simple means don't be a fool. It will corrupt you. <coughs> Solomon, one of the wise men we read about in the Bible, he wanted to understand the foolishness of God. Now you might like, how in the world somebody to understand everything that's foolish of God? The only way he could understand it, y'all. He had to become a fool. He had to experience it. So, somebody said, every, man, man, you got to experience things to know. If you got to experience everything to know, you're going to be the biggest fool of all. Here's what I did when I was young. I was like, sometimes I used to look at people and make bad choices. Uh, I saw the end result. I don't want to do that. And I saw somebody else make a bad choice. And I saw the end result. Don't want to do that. You can learn from experiences, but who said they had to be yours? If you see somebody strung out on cocaine on, under a bridge, don't even know who they are. Do you go, are you going to try that to see how they got there? I'm saying this because this is kind of reason that I hear a lot of times, not just in my school, but among Christians. We reason funny. And we wonder why we end up in funny places. That reasoning will destroy us. But when we talk about counsel, things have changed. Like I said, we're, we're at technologically advanced. Man, I can, I can be in my room and change my television on the other side of the wall. Man, we're advanced. Shoot, we may have flying cars in 10 years. Who knows? But with all the advances we have, we don't even know who we are anymore. And we have to be careful. We talk about counsel. Things have changed. See, you got to think about it in Jesus' day. Many times when people got counsel, people had to come to your door. Not when you know they had to talk to you face to face. I ain't got to do that no more. I can lie to you through the TV. 
I can lie to you in music. Right? I can I can do some sexual dances on TikTok and make you like it and have you doing the same dances. Counsel. You say, Brother, da uh, Brother Davis, dances on TikTok can counsel. Yes, it is. Guess what they got you doing? Yes, it is. Counsel is what influences you. If it influences you to do the same thing, you receive counsel. You watch somebody robbing a store on TikTok and you go rob a store, you tell me you didn't receive counsel. Yes, you did. Watch what you watch these TikToks. I saw some students I taught five years ago. They start off TikToks doing whatever they call. I don't know what these dances are. They start off with these crazy uh, backpack dances, whatever. Now they're in middle school twerking like strippers. Be careful, young folks and older folks, because I see some adults on this foolishness. Be careful what you get involved in. The only thing the devil has done, they have taken sins and repackaged it. We, we just saw a scripture earlier. God made us perfect and upright, but what happened? We seek out evil what? Inventions. We invent new ways to sin. That's all this other stuff is. I'm not saying TikTok itself is a sin, but what we do on TikTok is a sin. Some people use TikTok to promote their business and they, they just may have uh, documentaries on there. But that's not what a lot of us do. We dance. We take it off our clothes. And then I, I, one song I heard my kids dancing to at school. Uh, I don't know what that thing is. Uh, Calling that the girls all kind of ages and stuff. And I, 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 and I, I know the dance because I, I teach every day. I see the kids doing it. But then sometimes you go around church folks, they doing the same, they doing the same dance. But here's the thing, they don't think, but sometimes our kids don't think we know what dance that, uh, what dance that, that, that um, what music that dance matches. I be knowing exactly what, what I, I'm around kids all the time. We dance and they dance doing the same moves. I said, oh, they're making TikToks. A bunch of music. It's like you tell the music and they need it. That's they doing. Be careful, young folks. The devil wants to snatch you away from God. Don't let him. Don't fall for this stuff. Be careful what you watch on YouTube. Be careful what you watch on television. And by God, stay with me, TikToks. Watch the music you listen to. All these things, guys, have counsel. Music has messages. Now, the songs these young men sung this morning, did y'all hear the good messages in it? It teaches you. Music and songs are to teach and admonish us. Right? It guides us. It warns us. Either the songs are going to teach us in the right direction, or they're going to teach us in the wrong direction. So how do you know if a song is Right or wrong? Good counsel or bad counsel? If you're listening to a song that's not teaching you scripture or teaching you to do things that God teaches you to do, you need to cut that out. Bad counsel? You got a song you love to dance to calling girls H's and B's, cut that out. Bad counsel? Take off all your clothes, cut that off. You need to put your clothes on. Bad counsel? I had a girl ask me one time, how do you find a good husband like you? Well, first of all, I didn't like that question. <laughs> but she added like you in there. I'm like, I know you. And she, she asked the question where she was dressed skimpy. And so I gave her an honest answer. I said, you really want to find a good person? First, change, change the way you think and change the way you dress. I said, if you want a good man, a good man, if I, if I saw you dressing like that, I want that. A good man. He had never approach you. Never approach you. The guys you don't get to approach you with your clothes off are guys that want to use you. Because that's what you put out there. And she got mad at me. 
hot. But I gave her some good counsel. She asked me, and I gave her an honest answer. She got hot. I like man, I wish you had that. But sometimes, like I said, when you give good counsel, and people actually love people, they, they're not gonna always receive it. Harmful substances, stay away from it. Bad counsel. You say, how is that bad counsel? Harmful substances take away your senses. And when your senses are gone, you cannot make good choices. I've seen a lot of people make bad decisions smoking marijuana. Being drunk. How can you make uh, sensible choices when your mind is not sober? Alright? Modesty. Bad counsel. You want a good man, but you're taking your clothes off. Not going to find it. Again, you have to be purposeful in what you're going after. You want a good man, dress like you want a good man. Men, you want a good woman, present yourself like you want a good woman. And vice versa. All right? Uh, affiliate groups, relationships, be careful. That can be a lot of things. Sprats, sororities. Now, Brother Mike can tell me to teach on this. I'm just talking from experience. Uh, when I got into college, one thing, we always went to college with a lot of Christians. A lot, of, a lot of brothers and sisters. One thing that caught a lot of them and drove them away from the church completely. Frat sororities. They love that stuff. Party. Man, they passed out half naked pictures of women every other week. Trying to get them to go to raunchy parties. And they look sometimes. I can't say they don't look enticing. But is that good counsel? Is it? So I'm not going to answer that for you. I want you to think. Is that good counsel? And knowing this, and parents, before we encourage our kids to get into this stuff, I know some parents used to tell me, man, back in the day, when I joined that frat this morning, it was all about good community service. Those times are gone. It's about taking your clothes off, getting drunk, having a party, a fun good time. There are some things and that don't mean every frat or sorority does that. That's some academic frats or sororities. That's different. Y'all know what type of sororities I'm talking about. <laughs> so, the main message out there, when we was in high school, nobody talked about frats and sororities because they were trying to do community service, y'all. Not nobody my age. <laughs> they were talking about getting the girls. Uh, they, want, they wanted all the girls, and the girls wanted to check the boys. They want to party and have a good time. That's what, that's what the conversation was. To be honest, that's what it was. Okay. So I had a decision when I got it. I can't say I want to because it. Because these girls look good. To be honest. They look good. And the guys, when I mean, they get in the front they got these uh, half, the half clothed girls on their arms, and then they flood them around you. You want to join? That's how it was, y'all. That's how it was. And, and man, that was tempting. That's one of the reasons I did not stay on campus. Because if I stayed on campus, I don't think I could have. So I, I went home. <laughs> All right. But know what you can have with young folks. Don't get out there thinking, man, I'm strong. I can watch these half naked girls every day and I'm be all right. No, man, come on. You better run. All right, be careful. Affiliate groups. And I'm not going to tell you everything that's right or wrong. And that's not my job. What I'm trying to get you to see, if you see wrong, go the other way. I don't care who it is. It could be another Christian. I told you, the people that were trying to influence me to get in this stuff, they were members of the Lord's church. Womanizers. Drunkard, drunkards. When we were members of the Lord's church trying to get to this stuff. So, I don't care who it is. Whatever group it is, have wisdom. All right? Foolish reasoning. So we move from bad counsel. If we accept that bad counsel, the next, next uh, progression is start to think foolish. All right? This is Proverbs 14 7. It says, Leave the presence of a fool, or you will not discern what is knowledge. So if you stay in the presence of people acting foolish, when somebody speaks wisdom to you, you don't think something wrong with them. If you hang in with a, a girl, if you hang with a guy that's no good, 
And you hang with them so long, your mama say, baby, you need to choose better. You're going to get mad at your mama. It happens all the time. You know why? You've gotten over into that foolish reasoning. You've gotten comfortable. You've gotten comfortable in sin. And who's, who can, who can, who can fall into that? All of us. This is not a message for the young guys. This is a message for, like, all of us, including me. All right, so we got to be wise. And don't think you're so strong that you can't fall. When did David fall? Old age. When did Solomon totally need God? Old age. Same subject. All right? So there's no age limit. Other scriptures to consider. James 1, 13 through 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted be any man. The scripture says, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. What lust have conceived, when we allow it to grow in our hearts, it brings forth sin. All right? Judges 21, 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Who, who, who can finish that? What happened? Anybody know that scripture? If you don't know, go check it out. But in, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. That means, did I say the worst thing that you could give yourself over to is your own self? Your own reason. Reason. Sitting up in there yourself, trying to figure things out on your own with no counsel. Man, that's good. That's why these guys have been uh, Listen to some of these guys that have been killing having these mad shoes in America. Have y'all heard of some of them that counsel? Have you heard their reasoning? They've been sent to themselves too long. They going mad. That's why they do mad and crazy things. So when you speak it crazy, talk to somebody you know that love. We all get that. If you ain't unique. I don't have some type of moments. I have to talk to somebody. You need to have to read. Man, when you start seeing your mind drift, call somebody that you know knows God and that loves you. All right. Phase two. Again, you get into foolish reasonings. Phase three. You stand in the way of sinners. What does that mean? Well, you move from listening to them. You move from Start, you start thinking like them. Then you start running with them. You just want them to cry. Now, when a person has to ask you, have you ever been around people that say, uh, and somebody around teaching the gospel, and then they see you, man, I didn't know you were a member of the church. What? You? Guys, that ain't a good thing. Don't you know that Christians in the New Testament were known by the way they acted and conducted themselves on a daily basis? And they didn't even call them Christians at first. They just called them people of the way. People that's like, like they got Christ. Christians came later. You know how they knew you were Christian? How you conducted yourself. They recognized people who were Christians by the way they lived every day. If you've been living around a person for years, and then they see you years later, they didn't know you were they, they didn't know you were a Christian. <laughs> Guys, that's a bad testament. That's a bad testament. I remember having a Bible study one time at, at the University of Memphis. And the person was actually uh, studying the Bible with me. And then a, a fellow Christian came up and he kind of was living wild at the time. He said, man, yeah, you need to teach that, teach that sinner. I'm like, well, first of all, it came wrong. <laughs> and then, and like, yeah. And then they started look, looking at him and like, you a Christian? <laughs> that ended the Bible study, y'all. Right? Totally ended the Bible study. Just because they knew that he was affiliated, he called himself a Christian in the lifestyle he lived. They said, man, you can't teach me nothing if you're a Christian. That, that literally ended my life. Christians, we have a job to do. First of all, we have a job to uh, save ourselves. First priority, 
Save yourself. <laughs> Look, I don't want to help save nobody and I'd be wrong with myself. Save yourself. But we also have an obligation to our, our neighbor doctors. Amen. All right? Uh, to be considered. And like I said, he came wrong. I was talking to the person. Yes, I know the person was living in sin, but we've all been there. So our job is not to attack people, it's to teach. Right? So, um, you got to be careful how you approach things, too. Uh, standing in the way of sinners. So we don't, that means you get to the point you're running with them. You're doing everything that they're doing. That way, there's no one can really tell the difference between you and them because you're running with them. All right? Second John, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Brother Mike, can you read one? It's up here. Without me making this up. And this is one of those hard scriptures sometimes it's hard to receive. This scripture, right? Anyone who runs and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The devil cannot snatch salvation away from you. The devil's job is to give you bad counsel and to cause you to leave on your own. That's what he did to Eve. He didn't make it use it, right? He just and she took the counsel. So it says the devil knows that he can't snatch salvation away from you. He has to get you to get, make the choice to walk away. Know the, we got to know the battle that we're fighting. Otherwise, we're going to lose. He's fighting for your soul. He's fighting to get you to walk away from your steadfastness in Christ. If he can get you to walk away from God and stay away from God, you're going to lose your soul. That's all he's asking. All right? Keep reading for me. Like I said, things have changed. So we need to understand the scripture in light of today. How do people bring counsel in your home? Television to bring counseling out. Where's your hand you saw teaching on television? Where's your hand you saw raunchy videos on television? Where's your hand you see the wrong music on television? Alright, so this can happen so many different ways in our generation. Like I said, they created new inventions. We gotta open our eyes and pay attention to it. Okay? Sometimes your kids have been in the house watching for not. And you be like, when they leave home, man, what happened to them? Their television happened to them. Right in your home. They receive all that bad counsel watching that stuff on television. Right in your home. All those years. And when they left, they just acted out what they saw. We have to understand, be careful. There's a, what's the song? Uh, Y'all probably remember this, Sister Neva. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. He is what you hear. Be careful of the hands when you touch. That's a kiddie song, guys. But man, that stuff is real. That's a kiddie song, but that's still trapping adults. Why do men cheat on their wives? They saw the wrong stuff. Why do wives cheat on their husband? They saw the wrong stuff. They need to go back to that kiddie song. Be careful of the eyes what you see. Some stuff we can't handle, y'all. I don't need to be watching this stuff. Sometimes we say, uh, this grown folks stuff. Man, that's no folks stuff. You need to cut that junk off. Grown folks can't have no more than kids. Why do you think we have so many divorces? We gotta wake up and adults, we gotta be, we gotta give kids better counsel. Don't be talking about this grown folks moves. I can watch this nakedness. It's grown folks stuff. You can't have it with Cut it off. Progression of sin. Continue. Phase four. The last two phases, uh, the last two points is uh, shorter, guys. So this is the main thing we need to understand. Sitting in the scorner seat. So you go from basically listening to the wrong counsel. Step two, you start reasoning wrong. 
Progression three, you start running with them. And when you run with sinners or wicked folks so long, after a while, you're going to be a teacher. All of us become teachers. You're going to either be a teacher of righteousness or you're going to become a scorn. Now, some of y'all might be thinking, I'm already a scorn. Don't mean you got to stay there, God. That's why God gives us these lessons. If it was too late, you'll be gone right here. God bless you to live. That means you have the opportunity to change. That's the grace and mercy of God. Okay? But a scorner is in this text, mocks, dishonors, or disrespects the teachings of the person of God. They replace God's wisdom with their own. And then you, you might say, hmm, I wonder if I'm a scorn. Well, let me show you, give you an idea of what a scorn is about. God's word will tell you to stay away from debauchery. If you don't know what debauchery is, it's drunkenness and wild parties, revelings. And then your friends say, man, girl, come on, go to the club with me. We're going to have a good time. Now, you know the scriptures. You know the scriptures warns that you against that sin. And you go anyway. You start, they, 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 first of all, they already got you to listen to bad counsel. That's how it starts. Be careful of the signs of bad counsel. It starts with something simple as that. Trying to get you to do something that you know ain't quite right. Right? Now I get you to go to the party. God might get you to go home with it. It progresses. Sin doesn't just, like you don't just wake up and say, I got five babies. I'm a, I'm a what, what they call it? Baby mama. I hate, that, I hate that phrase. What happened to why? But it just, it just happened by accident. I slipped up and got five kids. Man, y'all, that's not an accident. You didn't accidentally take your clothes off. You didn't accidentally get in the bed with somebody else that you know what you're doing. Those are conscious choices. And this coming from a person that has seen We make conscious choices. Don't be listening to T.D. Jakes like the devil made you do it. No, he didn't. We made, when we sin, we make choices. We have to own up to our choices and learn to make better choices. Okay? But if you're not going to be a teacher of righteousness, you're eventually going to become a scorner. When people are teaching truth, you're going to be, you're going to be whistling to folks here. Man, I'll be listening to them, didn't you? I'll be listening to them. You'll be tearing down truth when you should be building up truth. Some people might, somebody might be doing that right now. If you are, you're scorn. Be careful with that. Because when somebody shows you the word of God and you start talking against simple truth, you're not, you're not putting the preacher down or the sister down. You're attacking God himself. Uh, so be careful with that. Sitting in the scorner's seat. Let's go to the other part, which is what we like to do. The delight of the blessing. But see, before we can get to the delight of the blessing, we got to be able to walk away from the bad counsel so we can get to the good stuff, y'all. All right? The delight of the blessing, Psalms 1, 1 through 4. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Did y'all catch that word, delight? How many of you all here love God's word? Now some people in here, I gotta go to worship. Man. How long are you gonna preach? <laughs> delight? How many of us delight in the law of the Lord? So if you, if you can't delight in God's word, you can't enjoy it and love it, you're not going to ever understand the scripture. And in this law that he meditate day and night. Because you're not going to meditate on God's word day and night if you don't love it. You're not going to do it. You have to love it to meditate on it. You know why people love, for, uh, love how you know people love pornography? 
Are they going to do that tonight? It's still on their mind. Oh, man, I can see it. Oh, man, I can see it. You know, they love it. They love it. Because after they stop watching the show, it's still on their mind. If you want to know what you love, pay attention to what you think about at night when you see it. That's good to That shows you what you love. If you're thinking about the wrong things, pray to God to help, help you change your thing. And that's not something I'm judging. That's something you need to judge yourself. I don't want to know all your thoughts. I can't handle my own. <laughs> Moving on. It says, It's the life of all the Lord. It's going to be meditated day and night. So if you love God's word, and you allow God's word to be on your mind every night, you will be like a tree. Plant by the rivers of water and bring forth fruit in the season. But the first thing has, that has to be first is the proper love. What do you love? And I know a lot of people say, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Well, everybody, loves, everybody loves to say this stuff, right? But then they, they go out and curse you out so it's service. We have the cliche phrases. But do you really love God? Really? Do you really love Him? Or are you just using the catchphrase that everybody expects to hear? You can't fool God on this. But He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth His fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither. But whatsoever He doeth shall, shall prosper. Sometimes we wonder how do we grow strong in the Lord? The Bible tells us. We got to learn to have a taste for the right things. And I say learn. learn. Got to learn. That means continual study. Whatever the Bible says, guess what? Be there. I don't care if somebody has a Bible study at their home. You know you need help? Be there. Like somebody told me I need to change where I eat. I love chicken. Love you. And they say I gotta change the way I eat. Because I'm a, I'm actually born alive by a baby. And uh man, that's all. I gotta develop a taste for vegetables. So if we can do that to help ourselves in our physical body, how much more? Should we work hard to develop a taste for the right things for eternity? All right? It says, a wise person seeks good counsel. Where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in the abundance of counselors, they're saved. Can we see, the, can we see a man of the Father? We listen to bad counsel? Where there's no counsel, a nation falls. A home falls. Our own lives fall. But where there's good counsel and it's received, they're safe. And guys, I know some things I said are hard to hear, but my ultimate goal is that we're safe. We want everybody in here safe with God. Safe in the arms of, the arms of God. We wouldn't want to be fooled and taken away from that. I don't know how this picture ended up on top of my words. Well, well, well. Last, last phrase. The unrest of the wicked. Psalms chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. So I'm going to ask Brother Michael to read this since I can't see this. I can quote it, but I, I want somebody else to say something. And I can always learn mine too. Psalms chapter 1, verse 4 through 6. So the unrest of the wicked, you got it? It's up there. Ungodly living. I'm not going to tell you it don't feel good, y'all. It does feel good. That's why people do it. 
at the end of it. Oh man, that's bad. People that have kids out of wedlock and are single mothers now. You can't tell me they probably didn't have fun while they were doing it. But you also can't tell me they're not having struggles afterwards. There are consequences for bad choices. It feels good at the moment, but it can cause you a whole lifetime of pain. God is trying to help us to avoid that pain. In order to do that, the Bible teaches us of something that's hard to hear. But like you got a doctor, you got an infection. And they put someone in infection, you're going to have some, somebody put an alcohol on a, on a bad sword. It burns, it hurts. But the doctor has to hurt you to heal you. God's word is trying to work surgery on our hearts. And they say, I ain't going to say your heart. I say our hearts. Because it's something we, have, we should, as Christians, examine every day as individuals. Okay? Before we uh, end, um, I'm going to have Brother Mike read something. Jo uh, Joshua chapter 24. I think I, I've missed it. But just to help us understand something, I guess I accidentally left it on But Joshua, Joshua chapter 24. Oh, there it is. Verses 13 through 22. Oh, you got to pull it up. Ah, you got to pull it up on there. Now, that's one script that I didn't put on there. Now, the reason I'm going to read this scripture before we close. I want you to hear the words of the people of Joshua's day. I want you to hear the words of Joshua. And then I want you to think about the end result. Because many times we're just like these people. And I say we. I'm not pointing fingers at you. We as a human race, we have a tendency to say one thing and do another. And that's a dangerous thing when it comes to serving God. So let, let's listen to this. Brother Mike, I'm going to give you the mic. Hold on. You got uh, Joshua chapter 24, verses 13 to 22. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not. And ye dwell in them of the vineyards and the olive yards which ye planted uh, not do you eat. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. And in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve you the Lord. So, really, the same instruction Joshua's given here is what I gave today. Good counsel. You might say, Brother, Brother Josh, you didn't tell me about false gods. Yes, I did. You listen to wrong music, they teach you bad lessons. That's yeah. draw you away from God, false gods. <laughs> when you're listening to the wrong, watch the wrong stuff on television. What is it doing? Drawing your heart away from God. That's become an idol in your life. An idol is anything that draws you away from your steadfastness in God. Raise your hand together. Same message. Joshua warned the people then. If people are going to teach truth now, we're going to warn you now. But devices have changed. So they didn't have all this technology in it. But the end result is the same. Okay? So let's keep reading. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which ye or which your fathers rather served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites. Alright. Choose you heard the you heard the answer question. If it seem evil to you, if the scriptures we read that offends you, that seems evil to you. Well make your choice. Make your choice of what you're going to serve. You're going to serve your own lusts and ambitions. Or you're going to trust God and go to heaven. That's me, but make your choice. So sometimes people think what we're saying now is different from what they said then. It's no different. True gospel preachers, they laid it right on the line. And they told the people, make your choice. You look at Acts chapter 2, same thing. Save your sailors. He taught the truth, but now it's your choice. Save yourself. Make your choice. All right? 
in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and which did uh, those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave, drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. Man, these folks saw the good with these idols, man. They hold it on the idols, but listen how they talk. Man, God did this for me. God did this for me. God did this for me. I'm going to serve the Lord. But they never said anything about letting go of the idols. Raise your hand, you copy. Let's keep reading. Joshua caught it. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is the holy God. What? They just said they're going to serve the Lord, Joshua. So why did Joshua say you cannot serve the Lord? Guys, the people would not release their idols. Just saying, I will serve the Lord, does not make it so. Serve means to subject your life to, to get rid of, let things go in your life so you can serve your master. To serve God means to realize that you are not the captain of your own life. You have to admit that God is. And you have to be willing to put yourself out of the way. So what they're saying, they recognize what God did, but they were not willing to put themselves out of the way. Raise your hand if you call it in. Now Joshua said, <laughs> so listen, who called it? Let's get reading. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt. Soon you, after that, he had done you good. Now, he goes on to say, of course, these people say again, we will serve the Lord. And they made a pact afterwards. But Joshua made, made, had to give, he had to deal with the elephant in the room that they didn't want to deal with. They were saying they would serve the Lord, but they would not let go of their idols that separated them from God. <laughs> Joshua, you can't serve the Lord doing this. You can't. God will not accept it. So we have to make a choice, y'all. All of us have to make up our minds. Who do we going to serve? Our own lust, or are we going to actually serve God? Now, we know the end of the story. They said they would serve the Lord. But the reason I brought up this story is for this reason. They had a generation of adults, older generation, that would not let go of idols. But it said, the, the people stay with God as long as those older generation, the half-hearted generation live, because they were half-hearted. But what I want you to understand is the question you have, well, we know, who's ever heard the question, why are we losing all our kids? Why are we losing our kids? What's happening? Half-heartedness is happening. Adults, we cannot be half-hearted. We, we may stay with God for the rest of our days being half-hearted. But our kids won't know them at all. Half-heartedness breeds rebellion in the next generation. This is why we're losing our kids. We're not going to keep converted. Half-hearted. That's what happened to Joshua's day. Now, Brother Mike, he's a, he doesn't read the scripture long enough to know what happens next. So in the very next chapter, a generation rose up. They did not know God. Why? Half-hearted adults that taught them. The Bible does not hide that. We miss it, but the Bible does not hide it. So I'm just urging you, if you're half hearted you're teaching your kids to be holy, but you're holding on to ungodly stuff in front of them. 
Let God convert you first. And then you probably can save the children. Like I said, he, like he said, one of my favorite scriptures is Psalms 127.4. We can't shoot our kids in the right direction if we're not going in the right direction. You can fool everybody else. You can't fool the kids in your house. They know you. And they're going to follow your habits. So if you say you're a Christian but you have ungodly habits at home, expect your kids to follow the ungodly habits. God wants us to be saved, y'all. He don't want us to be lost, but we got to receive the teaching. We can't be like the people in Joshua's day. Say, I will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord. They go right back home to your eyes. You cannot serve the Lord. Hold it on to your ungodly. If we're going to serve the Lord, we got to listen, come to God on his terms. And that don't mean God won't forgive you in some instances. But raise your hand if you want your children to be lost. The kids you love. Let's say you were half-hearted and you, but you, you hung on till you died. Do you want your children lost? Do you want them not to know God at all because of your half-heartedness? If you care about your children, let go of some things. Let go of your own ideals and let God's word take the place of it. We're going to end there. Uh, is there a giant ball in your life? Uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 45 says, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have the divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that set itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I pray this lesson starts you in that direction. Starts you into surrendering your thoughts and your actions to God so that, can, that he can tear down the stronghold that has been holding your family back in you. All right? God wants to bless all of us. He don't want to bless one of us more than the other. But God will not bless unrighteousness and rebellion. All right? So let us submit our hearts to God and let him bless, let, that he can bless us the way he wants to bless us. So we're stopping here. It says, man and brother, that's Acts chapter 2. What shall we do? You know, on Acts chapter 2, when the first gospel message was preached, it must have been a powerful message. Because the only thing that people said after the afterwards, man, we must stop. Man, what we need to do? Well, Peter didn't say, have to say, hear the word they have already heard. Peter didn't have to say, you need to believe. The very fact that they said, man, we do what, we'll do whatever we need to do to get things right with God, prove that they believe. He just needs to tell them what to do next. Well, Peter's answer is my answer to that. It's no different. If you, if you recognize sin in your own life, and that's not for me to figure out, you need to know that for yourself. Our job is to teach. Your job is to search your own heart with the word of God to see if you are in line with the word of God. But he says, repent and be baptized. He didn't say some of you. Every one of you. So anything we teach you to do, we have to do. We're no different. We're not like God. I'm better than you or you better than me. We are all, we were all sinners before we obeyed the gospel. And the only reason we're righteous is because God stepped on our account. They obeyed me. Righteous. If you're not in a good place with God today, you can be in a good place with God today. If you choose to. If you choose to. He says, say, uh, with many other words, he says, save your Sales from this untoward and crooked generation. Now he told them what to do. Repent and be baptized. But then he kept teaching. And he told them to save the sales. So if you know you're in a guilty distance away from God, I'm going to encourage you to save the sales. Come to God before it's too late. Just like I did. So that we can help each other make it to our final destination. 
But then it's the only one subject to the invitation, and she kind of moved together, say. So then, very soon, we are going to see the king. So then, very soon, we are going to see the king. So then, very soon, we are going to see the king. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to situation you in, but when it comes to your spiritual journey, understand that that's not good counsel. That did not come from the Bible. Uh, but the Davis in the beginning of his sermon says that every choice that you make, seek counsel in every single choice that you make. Um, and in that you understand that the eagle does not seek counsel from the pigeon. He is more blessed. And it's not because he feels better, it's because the blessings that the eagle receives is different from the pigeon because he needs more. He needs more suffering. So understand that where you are and how you go about life, that the blessings that were given to you are for you. Use them. Don't seek counsel from those who do not have the same blessings or the same calling that you may have. Understand that you are of God. Uh, thank you again, Brother Davis, for such an amazing message. Uh, what counsel have you received? The progression of sin, the delight of the blessed, and the unrest of the wicked. At the beginning, he, he was saying that this may offend you. And I want to say, don't let it offend you, let it challenge you. As he said, go into the Bible, prove him wrong. Prove yourself right. Find what you need to think. You find what you need to do. Find what you need to find for yourself. We have some who have responded, and we'll be writing to those. The first is coming from Brother James Hill, who's saying that uh, his hearing is going bad at times, and he's hearing a lot of thinking. He's asking for the prayers of the church. Uh, the second is from Joy Browley, and she's asking for the prayers of the White Haven uh, band. As they were in Atlanta this weekend for a battle of the band, their band director passed away. So we'll definitely be in prayer for that time. And from Southern Vernon Burks, he's asking for prayers for the Burks family and the Pointer family. And he's asking that God continue to guide him and his family and protect us uh, and his children. At this time, will you please go with me and pray? Dear Lord, we come at this time thank you. Thank you again for all the many blessings that you've given us. Our cup truly is running over, and we thank you. For all the blessings that you have given us, for the blessings that you will give us, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for keeping us in holiness, and we thank you for this opportunity to come together to listen to your man say with Brother David again that he, he brings a, a, a beautiful message, and that as we, as we listen and as we learn, that we took something from it so that we may go, as he says, to be as teachers and to teach the word. And to understand, dear Lord, that you are the counsel that we should look towards. And if we do not have you in our corner, we might be rather not have anybody at all. So, dear Lord, we just come praying for those who have asked for prayers for Brother Bernie Davis and his family. Dear Lord, continue to be with them. Continue to be with us as a whole, dear Lord. Continue to protect us. From uh, Sister Joy, dear Lord, we just come praying for the White Haven family as they have, they have, they have felt lost. And it is, it's, it's close, dear Lord. Continue to be with them. Continue to bless them as they go through their mourning process. And for Brother James Hill and his health, the Lord, continue to be with him, continue to help him uh, as he is sick. Uh, if there is, continue to help with his hearing, dear Lord. And at this time, the Lord, we just want to ask for forgiveness for all of our sins because we know that we have done wrong. And we confess that we do wrong so that we can go in your holy life. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Send me along.
and sisters. Amen. We've come to another part of worship known as communion, which is used to give thanks to God. In the communion, of course, in Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 and 29. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and burnt it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. I said that day when I drink it with you, you and my father's kingdom. The Bible also teaches how we are to come according to Acts chapter 20, verses 6 through 12. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of eleven bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, which to depart on the morrow, and continued his teaching to men. And there were many lights in the upper chamber, where they were gathered together, and there stand the window a certain young man named Titus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he hung down with sleep and fell down from the third light and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him and said, Trouble not yourself, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, and had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while even with the break of day, so he departed, and they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comfortable. Please bow your head Lord, thank you for this opportunity to commune on, on this first Sunday, as well as the chance to remember Jesus and give thanks for the abundance of blessings he's bestowed upon us. We thank you for this bread and remember Jesus' body, and we thank you for this cup and remember Jesus' blood. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Because they received counsel among themselves, Spiral followed the counsel of Ananias. When he lied, he died on the spot. She followed his counsel, not knowing what had happened. It was the same lie. It's good to get good counsel. Amen. Amen. And especially when it comes to giving, you need to seek the counsel of the Lord because we can we can mess around and miss him. Uh, and not not get good counsel. Relative to giving. Let's be mindful of that as we give today. God be good to us. Don't, don't let Satan whisper in your ear. Don't, don't receive bad counsel and let him trick you into holding back what you ought to be giving to the Lord. We can be in your boulevard for. Your given efforts thus far, let's continue. 
to, to follow good counsel and be the, the stewards that God has called us to be in this place. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father of God, our Father, we are so thankful for all of your goodness toward us. Thank you, Father, for all of your blessings, physical and spiritual, for all the things that you continue to bless us with and pertain to life and godliness. We don't deserve it, but because you love us, you keep on blessing us uh, just where we need to be blessed. And Father, help us be mindful of that as we give back to you today as we have been prospering. Father, I pray is that the receiving of these funds be used with wisdom, guidance, and prudence as we seek to do kingdom business in this white Haven community, uh, in this city of Memphis, and more in the world. Is our prayer. It's in my name, Jesus, we pray and give thanks always. Let's together say. Thank you, Josh. I 
I said, let's give him another hand. And all these young men uh, who have served us uh, on today, they've done an outstanding job. Give it a hand. all of our guests, it has been our great delight to have had you here uh, on today. There are other places around this city you could have uh, visited on this morning, but you chose to be with the people of God right on the boulevard. We're glad that you're here because after all, the boulevard is a place of belonging that leads to a place of blessing. Amen, somebody. Amen. We, we're, we're glad that you chose to be with us and we trust that you'll come and be with us again. If there are those who visit in, in person and uh, you like to stand and let us know who you are and where you're visiting from, we want to give you that privilege. Are there those to my right? You visit. You can visit. To my right. To my right. All right. Then to my left. Uh, visitors, I know we have some love roll folk back there. Glad to have you. And y'all stand up again and let us see who you are. Love roll. Amen. Wonderful. Host of young folks. Uh, and older folks as well. Amen. From Blue Road. Let's welcome them. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Supporting your preacher. Amen. One of your preachers. They have many down there. We thank God for how God is blessing that work uh, in a powerful way. Other others to my left. Again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, those who are visiting with us uh, virtually, thank you for visiting with us, and we look forward to the day uh, that you will be visiting with us in person. Amen. Just uh, some quick reminders. Uh, new members, if you uh, were baptized or placed membership within the last three years from 2020 through now, we we'll need to meet with you uh, for just a uh, couple quick minutes in the conference room. We need to make sure the bio information is updated so we can get all the information updated uh, in our system. Make sure you're familiar with uh, who your family life minister is and the whole nine yards. So if you would, give us just a couple minutes. Conference room to my right uh, after we dismiss um, and uh, we'll make sure that we have all of the necessary information uh, on you. Again, prayer service uh, this uh, Wednesday evening uh, at uh, 7 via Zoom. This is the end of quarter prayer service. Uh, church, please make plans to be in attendance. We need prayer. We need each other. So let's, let's plan to be there uh, for uh, this prayer service. And then um, on May the 10th, which is the following Wednesday, uh, your preacher has been asked to uh, be a part of the uh, summer series for Horn Lake and Levi uh, on the 10th of May at 6 p.m. And so uh, the leaders, uh, we, we thought it uh, beneficial to dismiss Bible study and we go over and support uh, Horn Lake and Levi in uh, this series uh, Yes, you'll be supporting myself. We thank you for that. But more so, you'll be supporting Horn Lake and Levi. Uh, and so, uh, next, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, the 10th uh, of May, 6 p.m., we all meet over at Horn Lake and Levi uh, as we take part in their uh, summer series support that event. If I can believe it, I can believe it. God can achieve it. So help me to show it. So the others will know. Give God some praise. You can this gift. Lord's willing, uh, here soon we'll have some information regarding our new building. Amen. Somebody. So be in prayer. Soon and very soon, we'll have some, some news to share with you. Amen. Come on, Tom, and give us a